So I'm back after two months back in the UK, I'm back in Satun, which coincides with our sixth month anniversary. Can you believe that? Six months in the boatyard. So I'm here with my uh, notes and I'll be checking up to see if Liz has been running our project ship shape. And uh, I'm going to go and check out and see what's been occurring in my absence. <laughs> our new fridge door and he's making our box for our uh, navigation equipment. Nice. Okay, top of the staircase. I've seen for the first time a finished tow rail and a rubbing strake. Tow rail looks really good, I've got to say, that finish is fantastic. Have a look at the, uh, the grain on that. Difficult to see the paint job, we've still got the uh, lino down. And I can't see the cockpit either. But that is the binnacle and that's where the box is going that we just saw Dan working on. And I can see, ooh, look at that, I can see the, uh, the floor. Just before we do that. Oh, well, they've even got the staircase up. Wow. The finish on that's fantastic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Really good. Really good. Look at that. Oh my god. companionway steps if you remember before we had a solid ash step and now we have again this beautifully crafted stainless along with Pong's teak and you can see here how they are shaped in such a way that they dip like so So here we are down in the saloon and this is our saloon table which you've watched uh, the progress of over the last few weeks. It's not at the right height so we've been uh, getting the shape of it lined up first. If you'll see it follows the shape of the, uh, the benches and follows the line down here and um, obviously it's going to come up a bit but this is the cunning design that we've come up with. It lifts up and it reveals our coffee table. And the idea is, is that this is on a pedestal which we got made in a PSS boatyard. As I said before the stainless steel work is second to none. So this is a pedestal yet to be fixed in place and the idea is, is that this will move up and down. And then we'll just line this with a felt so that it protects this as we uh, put it on. And this, when we're not using it, will stow in the cabin. So very pleased with that. So one of the things that the carpenters have been working on is our new ceiling. Uh, previously we had five strips of vinyl covered uh, ply and we've now opted to break it down into three larger strips which allows us to run a channel and inside here it's actually set back so that's going to be sprayed black and then that's also where we put our LED strip lights so it gives it a much cleaner look than our previous ceiling that we had and that idea runs all the way through the boat so again you can see we're in the galley now and the idea here is that we're going to run a white LED strip down this channel and a red one down this one so that uh, when we're night sailing and we only want to use the red light it's closer into the actual galley area to light it up and don't forget of course we're also putting strip lights in down here the key thing is is that Dean has been uh, working away actually getting the cables ready so the uh, the lights are almost ready to put to put up and hopefully that's something we'll work on this week one of the things to remember with the ceiling is that this is um, marine ply here, but it will be covered in a white laminate. 
So we're now at the chart table, and this is our uh, panel of electronic electronic items. And what Sunbird has done is he's actually just created some basic templates. So these aren't the doors themselves. All he's doing right now is making sure that things fit according to my schematics that I left him. So he's uh, made little templates. That's going to be our computer screen. Obviously, that's the chart plotter and our breakers. So once we're happy with that, he can then actually start installing them. This is the heads, minus the toilet, which is going to sit in there. And if you remember in one of Liz's clips, she was explaining how the floor is made up of three pieces of the uh, Wilson Art 8mm laminate, which is like rock. So we now have a solid floor in the heads which is much more preferable to the uh, teak slatted thing we had previously which is always rather annoying. There's still a lot of plumbing to do. We've got to fit uh, the tap in there, we've got to re-plumb the pipe work and of course we have a new uh, deck shower which is going to be installed at the back of the boat so I've got to plumb that in at some point which means uh, cutting the old plumbing lines somewhere down inside there and then running them through the back and things like the holding tank need to be plumbed in as well. Okay so a lot of what we've talked about inside the boat has been cosmetic but of course there are far more important things that we have to do. Uh, one area that we haven't touched yet is the whole drive system and the idea is, is that we're going to take the shaft out, uh, we want to disassemble the max prop, uh, we've got a couple of uh, grease grub screws to drill in to the uh, shaft of the prop uh, which will allow us to grease the prop without having to take it off. Uh, then inside we've got an old stuffing box. We need to remove the stuffing box. We're going to replace it with a dripless seal and that has to go back in. Um, and then of course we've got to get the rudder back on. And whilst we're here we can see of course the rigging and that's going to be my next job. Moo and I are going to sit down and uh, lay out all the rigging by the masts and he can start putting the, uh, the rigging back together whilst I battle with those furling mechanisms which we completely disassembled and I now have the uh, unenviable task of having to put it all back together. I'm not sure if I can remember how to do it but I'm sure we'll find a way. Okay, we've still got a lot of stainless work to be done and uh, we're here, this is the, uh, the pulpit. So we've just got little things like the navigation lights which have to be mounted, which means welding a, a little plate to this here. Uh, and then on things like the, uh, the push pit, uh, we've got considerations like uh, new uh, GPS mushrooms to be mounted. So we have to think about where we uh, drill the holes. And also there's gonna be a little bit of reworking with the uh, push pit as well, because we've got the, the new davits to install got the swimming platform and the step up from the swimming platform. So still quite a bit of stainless work to be done. Um, in fact, if we nip over to the uh, stainless shop now, we can go and have a look at our swimming platform. Okay Liz, we're in the stainless steel workshop. Yeah, we're in the workshop, take you through to see the beginnings of our swimming platform. Hi Nathan. This is what's come back from Hatchy Iron, so they had to bend it into this shape. And this shape was taken from the template, which is up here, that was made by POM, which gives you an idea of the size of the uh, swing platform. So it's a nice, big, as you can see, wide piece of tubing. We're not going for a traditional platform, it's going to be quite different to what you've seen before. This is the beginnings of it here. So Jamie, do you think we're nearly finished? Uh, no. There's still a lot of jobs to do and so this morning on my first day back I've just gone through and made some notes. I'm not going to read it out to you but you can see I've broken it down into each section, the hull, masts, carpentry, plumbing, engine, electrics. There's at least 
a hundred or so jobs and of course for every one job there's another five jobs attached to it. But at least this way we're able to compartmentalise and to work out what exactly we, we need to do. So they're all pretty straightforward. Um, some of the jobs will take five minutes, some might take five days. But uh, I'm pretty confident that we will be in the water before Christmas. <laughs> And what do you think of uh, what we achieved while you were away? Yes, I should say that I am very, very impressed. The, uh, the standard of work is exceptional. And the amount of work that's been done in my absence has been amazing. And kudos to Liz for not only project managing it, but also doing all the videoing and the photography in my absence as well. So, uh, Liz is now going to take some time off from the project. <laughs> and I'm taking over. So, uh, it's quite well timed as well because now we've got to concentrate on things like the re rigging of the, uh, the boats, the deck fittings, and the electronics, much of which um, I, I know I've got it in my head as to what to do. So, give Liz a chance to take at least, I'll give her two days off work, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we can crack on. What's occurring then, Phil? Sorry? What's occurring? We're moving the mast. Moving the mast. Let's go and see how the yard works as a team. They're coming around the back here, are they? Oh, here they come. So that was Phil, who is getting his mast moved. Look at this. I like they put all the small kids at the back. I've started to put the fittings back on the main mast now. It's a fairly slow process because uh, not everything fits as it did when we took it off. For example, this is a fitting for one of the spreaders. And because it's been painted, it's too thick to get back in there. So one of the solutions I suggested was to wait for the mast to heat up in the afternoon sun and to put this piece in cold water to see if we can fit it in here. To be honest these weren't painted anyway so if necessary we might have to scrape the paint off but that's just an example of how as I said the other day one job actually means another five jobs. You can see that we're now riveting in place. Uh, these pieces here which we've sprayed the back with Jotomastic just so that the uh, stainless doesn't react with the aluminium. The biggest problem that I was really worried about, the one I was genuinely losing sleep over, was the furling mechanism. And I'm happy to report that it all went together perfectly with new bearings and uh, it fits and it appears to be working. So all we need to do now is to put the central um, axle back down the mast and uh, we'll be close to finishing with the main mast and we'll move on to the mizzen next. Just as an extra precaution, these stainless steel bolts that have the washers on, the washers have been backed with a just a, a masking, well it's more of a, a duct tape actually, a tough tape 
Um, so we've put those on the back there just in case there is any uh, reaction between that and the aluminium because these are aluminium plates that the winches sit on. Carpenters have pretty much finished fitting the ceiling inside and here you can see the pieces have now had their laminate put on top. So obviously they've glued them down and they're just weighting them down to stick them. Uh, they've already been velcroed on the underside so they'll be ready to put up but we won't put those up yet until we get the electrics done. But uh, you can see in the forepeak how it's going to look and I'm really glad that I went with Liz's decision to put this laminate up because it looks great and it's certainly a lot cleaner than the horrible vinyl that we used to have which despite being told that it's easy to clean the actual reality of that vinyl is that it isn't it uh, stains very easily and is difficult to clean up so I'm glad that we went with this uh, decision to go with the laminate. A little glimpse of the four peak ceiling Quite difficult to see because of the differences in light here but this is the uh, the white full mica and in this instance they've had to stick it straight onto the ceiling but the overall effect is that it makes the place a lot brighter and as I said previously a lot easier to clean And so ends another week in the boatyard and the end of our first six months at PSS in Satoon. From here on in we're going to be concentrating more on rebuilding the boat. So the video updates will probably be less frequent but we hope you continue to enjoy our progress.